Good morning, everyone. I'm Morgan Donner, and in today's video, I would like to clean up and reorganize my fabric stash using the KonMarie method. Like a lot of people, I suspect, I've been hearing a lot recently about Marie Kondo, probably in large part because of her new Netflix show, uh, Tidying Up. Uh, I heard about it from friends, I saw people talking about it on forums and what have you, and I was curious, so I watched a few episodes, I read the book, and I have really been wanting to tackle my sewing craft room for a while now, so this seems like a really great catalyst to get that started. As per the book, <laughs> this is not step one of cleaning up if you're doing a full house tidying in the way that she describes. The idea is that you want to tackle easier things first, like clothing is number one because it's pretty easy to get rid of clothing that you don't need anymore. Look through your stuff and get rid of the things that are too big, too small, too itchy, too out of season, too don't fit your lifestyle anymore. And then progress to harder topics based on, you know, <laughs> how emotionally attached you might be to them. I feel like the fabric is the the clothing of my craft room and I feel like there are definitely some pieces in here that I could make very quick easy decisions about and go nope don't need that don't need that and there are some that might be a little bit tougher we'll see. Fabric is it's very easy to get into that mindset of, nope, don't get rid of it because you might have a use for this later. You know, maybe you don't like this color, but it would be great for mock-ups or it would be good for this or that or the other thing. But we want to clear out what's not doing us any good so that we have more room for awesome fabrics, which I have on the way for those of you interested in updates regarding the, uh, Janet Arnold stays. I'm getting there eventually. Maybe. So to jump on in, I think I'm going to treat it the same way that you would the clothes and dump them all out. So let me get on that. Patterns will come later. So for anyone who watched my Butterick 6018 uh, dress making video, that dress was actually intended to be a mock-up. It wasn't supposed to be my final version of it. You know, mock-ups, always good. That way you can test that you like the pattern before you make it again and that it fits you and all that. I never did get back to that, like making the actual dress. So that is all of those shelves. I do still have stuff in a few more of these shelves. Like I've got boxes and things up there. Uh, down here, I've got some pattern paper stuff. I've got some bubble wrap for packaging, but that's not fabric, so it's not part of this equation. So here's my beautiful fabric collection. Uh, all said and done, this really isn't very much fabric. I've seen people with much bigger collections. I have bought or found various fabrics over the years, and sometimes when I find a fabric that's really, really great, especially at a good price, I have a tendency to want it. The problem with a lot of those that I find is that they are often in like just one or two yard pieces, which is less useful. Um, maybe I should do a video about what to do with one yard or less. I do know that there are some pieces in here that I, I really don't need to hold on to. They don't serve a great function. You only need so much mock-up fabric, right? Let's go ahead and start, start tackling this down. This is a very bright green. This fabric is actually kind of fun because it started out as a incredibly bright, bright, bright green. And I went ahead and dyed it to be just a little less. I think I've got like five or six yards of it, so it gets an automatic good. 
I think what I'm gonna do for this is make a keep pile, a get rid of pile, and fold it up after. I do love silk. This was a piece of wool I found that I thought was really cool. I love that it's stripey, uh, but I don't have many historical garments that I would want to make that would be striped. But I love the idea of stripes. Maybe. This is a very, very pretty earthy green. Keep. It's a very pretty color. I'm actually wondering if it's all wool. Let me go grab a lighter. I'll do a quick burn test. Wool sometimes has a kind of wet dog smell, which makes sense. There for dog fur. It does smell like burning hair, which is, is usually what you want to look for for wool. It might not be 100% wool, but I think it has a pretty high wool content, so it'll pass for now. This one I know I can definitely get rid of. I picked it up because I thought it would be really pretty as a dress skirt overlay. I don't like sewing with shears. Nah. This one's really, really cute. It actually has little greyhounds on it running through the uh, the paisley forest here. It's very cute, but I don't have any use for it, so goodbye. This is just some simple black wool. Never hurts to have that. Here's one of those ones where I've only got like two yards, maybe, maybe a yard and a half, but I like it. It's so green and wooly. <sighs> it still smells like burning dog hair. It's the downside of burn tests. Oof! I have so much of it, which is very exciting. I have no idea what I'm gonna make with it. This will be good for something at some point. I think this one deserves another burn test. This one's a bit weird. It's got a little bit of that burny hair smell that I associate with wool, uh, but it has a really hard bead and it bubbles when it's burning, which tells me that it is definitely not 100% wool. It's, it's got something else in there. There's some parts of it that have been damaged. So I think let's just get rid of it. Look at this little tiny piece of fabric. All right, I'm sorry, mate. I think you've got to go. The smell of burnt wool is not very pleasant, but it is distinctive. Look at this nice purple. I don't ever wear purple, but it is very pretty. Maybe. This one's a pretty easy decision. I have a little bit of some red linen. I, I don't need it. Oh. See how it continues to hold a flame? That's one of the things that's really nice about wool, which this is not. Wool will self put out really quickly least for the most part, whereas some other fibers will just keep on smoldering. Hmm. This one actually might have a lot of cotton in it. It has a sort of like papery smell when burnt, which kind of makes sense for cotton because it's a plant-based fiber, so you... paper's also plant-based fiber. I'm very eloquent today. No. I have a lot of it, and I think that it could go to a good home, but I think that doesn't need to be my home. I've already used it for something. If I ever do a video about what to do with small pieces of fabric. This green, I think is wool, but it's one of those kind of more itchy wools. 
Here's some cotton, which is nice for mock-ups, but again, you only need so much mock-up material, so... For a lot of these scraps, my mind immediately jumps to, oh hey, this is about enough for a hood, but you only need so many hoods. Sitting in my room, burning pieces of fabric. This one's very fun. <laughs> it's just so incredibly bright, but I don't think I have any projects that it'll work for, so. Mock-up fabric that is actually already earmarked for a project, so I should set that aside. Red wool, the best. This is what sparks joy in my life. Red wool with some slight twill texture. Anytime I see this heathered gray uh, pattern color and texture combo, I immediately think sweatpants. So here's some plaid that I am inexplicably going to keep, despite having gotten rid of a bunch of my other plaid pieces. Uh, this is something that I've had since I was a little kid. I do kind of have a a little bit of an attachment to this one and that's fine with the Marie Kondo method nothing says that you have to get rid of something just because you don't think you're ever gonna actually wear it or use it that's not what it's for the idea is does it make you happy does it spark joy does it is it something you want to keep in your life doesn't mean it has to be useful or pretty or functioning <laughs> But just doesn't make you happy and this does oh I have more of this very similar to some fabric I already tossed in there but not quite the same uh, curtains for some reason those don't go in here this is some fabric that uh, I have a lot of and I wouldn't make any dresses out of it now but one of my very first medieval dresses that I made was made out of something, I think the exact same pattern. I think it's uh, from Joann's and uh, same pattern, but different color. It was uh, like a blue or green, green, green version of this swirly pattern. And uh, so now I keep on finding it and using it for mock-ups or whatever else. Uh, but this is a, a nice large chunk of mock-up fabric, so I think I will keep it. Plus it makes me smile. This is one that I actually made a dress out of. Uh, it was not a very good dress, but I made it. Does this make me happy? No. This one's tougher because I do love silk. It is a little bit more stubbly because it's a kind of more dupioni sort of silk instead of a smooth, smooth taffeta. It's also a very like bright pink, almost neon pink color that I don't know that I'm actually going to get much use out of. So this might be in a goes to a new home to be enjoyed fabric. So I already used this to make a dress which I'm, I've worn several times on the, this channel. And uh, I, I'm not sure what I will make with it, with this last bit of fabric, but I like it, keeping it. Some more of that uh, swoopy design fabric. I had some light stuff earlier. I used this to make a pair of matching dog coats for for my two cute cute pups. I have a another curtain in here somehow. That's two curtains now in my fabric stash where curtains shouldn't be. Here's some uh, velvet figured silk. 
that I also already made a dress out of. But it's really nice fabric. And I still have a pretty good amount of it. Alright. The only fabric that I am not showing here is some linen that I still have on a bolt. It's just white linen, which for reenactment type people is great. You can use it for like 50 million different underlining type things. So I think that is for sure going to stay. And I also still have this red taffeta silk that was gifted to me. Gifted to me? Yes. It was gifted to me by a fan of the show, uh, anonymously, which was very cool. And I haven't, I haven't opened it yet because I haven't found the perfect project for it yet. But I'm excited to someday. It's gonna be so good. Ah. All right, so I am going to go ahead and call this good enough for tonight. We'll pick it back up in the morning and get all of this refolded up beautifully. I'm gonna try really hard to get them all folded to the same size and shape so that uh, much in the way that the Marie Kondo system uh, dictates, you want to be able to see all of your things at once, if possible, and be able to easily access them without messing up all the things above or below it. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do that yet. I'll think about it and tell you in the morning. Hello again, it's the next day, and now I get to tackle how I want to go about folding. So this is actually in my to not keep pile, so don't, don't look at it too closely. But before, I had all of my things stacked on top of each other, which was good for being able to visually see the edge of each of them, but leads to the problem of pulling out things from underneath another, and then they get jumbled and slightly messed up and it's not as good. So there's definitely a strong recommendation to always stack things vertically if possible. Now with fabric, that's a little bit tough because no matter what I do <laughs> to keep this up, it's, it's not going to stay up. You could try putting them all next to each other so tightly that they're all forced to stay up, but then you still have the problem of when you pull it out, things get messy and that's not so good. Um, now with enough folding, much like her method for clothing, you know, I could sit here and fold things in and eventually achieve kind of a, a standing roll thing. But unfortunately, something like this wouldn't make very good space usage of my closet where I keep my fabric because the rolls are only about this big whereas my closet's about this deep. You don't want to have things behind others or you're wasting space behind it on the shelf. Not so good. So I don't really love this as a solution. It'd be different if I had narrower shelving. I think this probably would be the way I would go which is probably be what she would recommend but that won't work for me so however I do have one or two things that are already wrapped up in these uh, cardboard cores which actually totally would stand great <laughs> and it's actually uh, if you go to a fabric store that's how they are often stored at the store although usually it's up like this but you get the idea so I think that something like this is the solution I want to go for, but I don't have bits of cardboard hanging around that are the right size. So I went to the store and I got myself some foam core boards, which I am going to cut up to the correct size and wrap my fabric up in it. So first I went back to my closet and measured the depth and the height of my available shelving. I do have my shelves at slightly different heights, but the top two here are close enough. And then I've got one that's approximately double that height below it. 
And now that I have my measurements, I can go ahead and use those to cut up my board to the correct size. Now, I already bought boards that are 20 inches in depth, which is perfect. All I need to do is divide them up so that they'll fit height-wise in my drawer. I keep saying drawer, it's not a drawer, it's a shelf, but you get the idea, right? So my initial cut in half is done, which means that these will now fit really nicely onto my bigger shelf, but I'm gonna cut down a few more so that they'll fit nicely on the narrower shelves up top. Just in case it wasn't quite clear, I am not in any way, shape, or form saying that you should or must fold your fabric this way. This is just how I think it might be kind of neat to, to try, and I'm sure that you could get away with using regular cardboard, or like I said before, folding it completely without any inner support. So please do feel free if you feel like this method isn't, isn't your jam, something about it isn't quite right for you. That's fine. I'm definitely not advocating that anybody do it this way. This is purely me experimenting to see if this is a fabric storage solution that makes me happy. All right, let's go ahead and get folding. Two down. So I do have a few here that I've already folded to the depth of my shelf from two years ago whenever I reorganized all this. And some of the fabrics, like this one, are kind of stiff enough. It won't stand up completely on its own, but between some layers of fabric with boards inside, I'll leave a couple of them boardless, in part because I'm not entirely sure that I have enough boards for my fabric, so just in case gonna kind of hedge my bets a little bit by leaving some of them unboarded that I think can take it. So here's a bunch of my narrow ones. I think I'm gonna tackle some of the bigger boards with the longer pieces of fabric next. Well, first things first with this one, I sewed it up into a loop so that I could dye it evenly and rotate the loop as I went. But that means that right now, my ends are currently sewn together. So I think I'm gonna have to seam rip this apart before I can roll up the rest of it. All right, now it's time for the exciting reveal. You stuck with me through the explanation at the beginning, the picking out of what fabric I wanted to keep or get rid of, the tedious but hopefully fairly fast by the time you guys see it folding, and now, now you get to see the big reveal. Except you don't, because whenever I went to put my bolts into the shelves, 
It turns out that despite carefully measuring the height of my shelf, I unfortunately didn't take into account that the fabric itself on the end of the bolt was going to take up quite a bit of room. Uh, I did add some extra breathing room for my bolt, but not enough for the thicker wool fabrics, of which I have a ton. So, oh well, whoops. I went ahead and took them back to the cutting board, unrolled them, cut the inner support down so that it could fit, and then refold the whole thing back up. And now they fit beautifully. And now you get the final reveal. <laughs> it's not very impressive when you have a whole bunch of empty room. It's not as satisfying as it would be if I had two, three full shelves of beautifully arranged fabrics. Well, part of that is that I got rid of some stuff, yes, but a lot of it is just that before it was kind of sloppily in there with some empty space in back and not quite filling up to the top and so on. So now that it's very, very densely packed in there and completely filling up this this uh, shelf, <laughs> it's gonna look like a lot less. Oh well. But what's exciting here is that now that I have very carefully condensed down, I have so much more room for more fabric in the future. It's gonna be so good. That was the message I was supposed to take from all this, right? Get rid of some of the stuff that I don't like as much and then get a whole bunch of new fabrics that I like a lot, right? That's the plan, right? Let me go ahead and get out of the way for a second here and kind of pan down so you can see my my glorious two shelves of fabric. Ooh. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed that video. I think it was one of my most self-indulgent videos so far. It was literally watch me go through my fabric, which was something that I wanted and needed to do anyway, but you got to join me for the adventure. Yay! Now I still need to tackle the entire rest of the room, but I can't imagine that you guys have much interest in seeing this level of shenanigans with my entire setup. So if you really, really, really do, let me know, I suppose, and we'll see what we can work out. But if you're like, okay, that was fun, but no more, I understand. With that, I think that is everything that I needed to, to do today. Ooh, actually, I have one little thing left over. We were just talking about getting new fabric to fill up these beautiful shelves, right? For those of you that follow me on the uh, social meds, you may have seen that I had some fabric coming my way, specifically for the uh, 1640s, 60s, 50s stays, and it might not look like much, but this, stay here, eh, oh no, okay, so this, can you see, maybe? It might not look like much, but it's a very lovely linen twill, which is going to go on the inside, the lining of our stays. And then this, this is the silk satin, which we'll see how well the camera focuses on it. It might not look like much here, but it's got a very nice, thick, luxurious feeling to it. They haven't gotten their own bolt yet, but they can hang out in here. But in theory, they shouldn't be in there for too much longer, right? If I ever get to making this project, maybe someday. So thank you so much for watching my video for the five of you that are still watching. Uh, it was a lot of fun to do something new and different. I think every video I'm doing something a little bit new and different, but you know. For anybody that's curious, the fabric that's left over that I did not want in my curated collection here was some of it given to local people who sew and could use some extra fabric, maybe in the sizes that I had, uh, and the rest will likely go to Goodwill. I did consider doing some sort of like channel giveaway, but 
one it feels kind of weird to be like I don't want this here you have it and two I got rid of a lot of things that were polyester or had holes in them or were like patterns that you wouldn't probably maybe maybe you would I don't know I wouldn't want to use for historical or even just clothing and making purposes you know some of it was you know <laughs> anyways before this very long video gets even longer <laughs> good night guys Why do I do this? That's not how you say goodbye to people.